Happy Friday, everybody. This is Gay and Bruno, host and producer of Between the Sheets podcast. Thanks for tuning in. We are on the first and third Friday of every month, but not next month. I don't know what we're doing next month because I'm going on a cruise um, with my friends. And um, so I've got to talk to Mr. Tony uh, to see when the availability is and, and all that other stuff. But again, thanks for joining us. You can follow me on Instagram, QTE Brat, QTE Brat on Instagram. And our face, our Facebook page, obviously, and the YouTube channel, which is Between the Sheets with Gay and Bruno. Please follow us there. All the shows go up um, on that as well. And then we're all on other um, sort of MP3 streaming platforms as well. Um, we have a great show tonight. One of my friends is on. Yay! One of the cruise people. And um, But let me introduce uh, just a few girls here today joining me. To the left of me, I have Miss Mara Shane. Hello, great to see you guys and be back. Hello, Mara. Hello. You have to tell us a little about your trek if you'd like later on. Well, and to my right, I have Ronnie Loiza. Yeah, I'm here. I just noticed we were all dressed so sporty tonight, like in our workout where we did it for Lisa. <laughs> yeah, we did it for you, Lisa. Thank you. I actually came here straight from the gym. So. Okay, Does that you mean need that to. We're going to work out tonight. Yes, you need to either Walking talk. Out? You need to either talk. Hold on one second. Close. Can you talk? Okay. Say something, Ronnie. Yeah, I'm here. I, you know, I can't okay. hear her well. It's a, yeah, it is a little soft. It's a little it's soft. Hold on, I think we're just going to flop her mic for a second. Okay. But okay. can you hear me? Uh, now we can hear you perfectly. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. I was just saying, I just came from the gym, and now we're ready to go on the podcast. Okay. Awesome. And then we have Tony, Tony Sweet, owner Hello. of UBN Podcast Network. We have been rebranded. So if right. you followed us as United Broadcasting Network on Facebook, it's now UBN Go Podcast Network. So okay. follow us. Follow us follow us also okay so here's the story and then um our guest is lisa newman out of mississippi <laughs> Woohoo! look at those abs or whatever they call them guns as you can tell i am not a gym girl <laughs> but nonetheless um how i met lisa i'll go really quick is her friend um, is a good friend of mine for a few years and um, I was introduced to Lisa and we've only really spoken on the phone a few times and now you know and I, I'm like so excited and I was inspired in talking to her and it came to me just one day hey, like, the, like literally this week hey Lisa you yeah. want to be on our show and she's like okay, okay. and yeah. so you know you you know she I will tell you secrets. She went out and did a photo shoot because of this. She went out and bought new clothes because of this. And, and you know, and I just said this is all prepping her for her future because her brand, you know, Perfit, um, is going to, well, not that it's going to go global, but I manifest that it does go global and it grows. Right. Um, so I always, you know, support women supporting women. And, uh, and that's what this forum is for, not only to promote their business, but also to give insight to all of us struggling with certain things. So let's take it from there, Ms. Lisa, and why don't you tell me sort of what your story is? Okay. Well, as you know, I think we talked about, I'm from Jackson, Mississippi, mm. and I have um, been in business since 1992. So not to give too much broad of age, but I, you know, I think as we all get older and if you continue to work out, I mean, you have bragging rights about your age. So I'm 57. And uh, my story is that um, back in the day, I mean, I was going to college and being a competitive athlete, playing volleyball, basketball, just trying to have that whole balance with the Southern um, charm, the Southern, you know, do everything right. You know, I, you know, my parents, you know, they look at me and just kind of admire me. So it was one of those things, kind of wrap it all up. You try to be mm. everything for everybody. And um, I love sports. So like I said, I got a scholarship. I went to Mississippi College, uh, uh, played volleyball, basketball, ran track, fast pitch, softball, had the athletic thing going on. Mm -hmm. And then in my sophomore year, I was asked to be the sophomore, you know, to be the Miss MC, you know, so I was in the Miss Mississippi College beauty pageant. I know it's hard to imagine. Beauty pageant. 
tell. <laughs> but it is but, from the uh, south. It's a, a southern thing. So it, maybe it's a southern thing. But um, but you know, in high school, you know, you have all that beauty and bow pageant stuff. I didn't. Mm. I didn't think I needed to go all the way back to high school. But you know, get the most talented, most versatile, most athletic. Put all, all that aside. You're like, okay, high school's over. Done. <laughs> get to college. I'm in Mississippi College sophomore class you go through the whole like the miss america pageant so you go through the whole beauty suit i mean beauty suit you know what i'm talking yeah, about yeah 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 you do the talent i play trumpet so i have a musical again you know just kind of up the ante in the south i mean i was also played piano played the trumpet so i played the trumpet there was a movie called somewhere in time uh-huh. i don't know if you guys know that with uh christopher reeve and jane seymour yes lovely movie it's very i'm a romantic so I know that's hard to believe in the South too, <laughs> but, um, but anyhow, or any who, um, the, 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 I played the trumpet. I played the piece, uh, the rock Monanoff somewhere in time, uh, spring Rhapsody that was in the movie with the Mississippi symphony orchestra, uh, in the Miss MC pageant. And so, you know, you do all that and you talk about pressure, but I thought, what the heck? I just got, you know, the, my sophomore class appointed me, I'll just do it. So it's almost like in the South, you have all these labels that go on top of your head and you just try to achieve, achieve, Mm. achieve, achieve. Um, And I don't know, I I mean, I can only speak because I am from the South, that I feel the weight of that pressure Mm -hmm. to try to be the best that I can be, not only for my parents, (laughs) uh, but for myself. And then you have all these friends that are kind of like either they're idolizing you or they're gossiping about you. Mm. So you have to choose the the good or evil of all that. And um, long story short, um, uh, as I progressed, uh, I went to college in 1983, graduated 87. I got a bachelor's degree at the time in 87. In the 80s, they were not talking about personal fitness. They were not even talking about sports management. It was only sports medicine. So I thought, and, I, and I've got a minor in nutrition and psychology in, at Mississippi College. So with those, those things, I thought, you know, what, what am I going to do? And then, so I thought sports medicine, well, I'll either try to like really sink my teeth into being like a sports medicine or a sports nutritionist psychologist or a sports med trainer or a doctor, and I thought, God, a doctor, I, I just don't know if I have it in me because I love fitness so much. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to get in all the academia. So, um, but but I love that, so I just didn't know what to do. So I did some studies at, we had a couple of hospitals here that they had what they call corporate health at the time, you know, where you have hospital wellness, like people can come in, you know, you could help the people that work in the hospitals, which were primarily doctors and nurses. Mm-hmm. And then you had just only a handful of people that would come through to say, you know, I want to try this wellness and health program that you guys have. Like it was smoking sensation, how to, you know, uh, modify your diet and blah, blah, blah. And that was so boring. I mean, in the 80s, it was so boring. (laughs) And so I thought, well, I guess the next thing, I just can't find that niche. And I went and worked at a physical therapy clinic. And I thought, well, maybe I'll go into physical therapy. That's the next best thing from going from sports to physical therapy. So I was working. And again, all this, I was getting credits to do all this stuff with Mississippi College. So I was working in um, the physical therapy clinic. People were coming in, they were hurt, and they were like, what do I do? And I said, what did you do? (laughs) I don't know. I got down the step the wrong way. And I'm like, well, and occupational therapy wasn't big then yet. So I'm I'm helping doctor these people up, you know, with, you know, physical therapy assistant and blah, blah, blah. And I, it was, again, a clinical setting, which to me, it was so, and I'm claustrophobic anyway, but anyway, you're, you're, you're tied into a particular place. And I thought, I just don't like this. I want Mm. to like, I want to get these people before they get here, but where do I get them? Well, people were still working out in health clubs, but they were just, you were going to the gym. I mean, it was kind of like your mom and pop gyms, or I think Goals Gym, which Mm -hmm. God bless Goals Gym. They've still been around. They've re, you know, revamped. But um, I thought, well, I want more. So I went into graduate school, went down to Hattiesburg, which is about an hour and a half from Jackson, Mississippi. And I went to the University of Southern Mississippi and got my graduate studies in kinesiology, Uh, which is body movement. And I enrolled in the dietetic program because I did both because I I thought, 
you know, you got to study body movement. Maybe that'll just kind of go along with the sports medicine, dietetics. My grandmother was a dietitian, so I thought, well, I mean, I'll make her proud again. There's that, you are you know. such a Capricorn, because <laughs> so, that's that's like my story. Yeah, you're such. So, right. I love that you're a Capricorn. Thank you, sister. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So so anyway, so um, so I was doing both of these, uh, and it was one of those things that I mean, I'm hurt. I mean, you know, as you go through life, there is such a thing called burnout. Yep. You can get burned out of school because you have such a passion. You want to go ahead. I just want to work. I just want to do what I want to do. But yet I was in school because that's, you know, once you enroll, you need to kind of follow through. So I did that. And, um, and once again, uh, you know, I'm working at the Institute of Wellness down in, in Hattiesburg. And I'm also working at Forest General Hospital. So I'm doing both of these things. And I just thought, oh, my gosh, there's got to be a way to put all these together. So what i found out there was a health club for women that was opening up in jackson i moved back to jackson and i started working at this woman's health club mm. and uh that was a new thing where you just really kind of focus your market and so that was good it allowed me to take everything i've done focus on a market for women and that actually i came back in 92 and that's when i thought i think you know in uh, New York and in California, they had these trainers to the stars. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I thought, why can't I do that here? So it was one morning, everybody probably has heard how your passions, you know, ignite. It's like in the middle of the morning, you have this like aha moment mm. as Oprah would call it. And I came up, I was trying to think if I did this, I need to have a name for my business. And then all of a sudden I was thinking about women and I thought, well, we all want like perfect bodies it, it, at that time. I mean, this was in the nineties where yeah. uh, let's get physical, physical, <laughs> oh, God. you know, Olivia Newton John was coming mm -hmm. out with all that. Mm -hmm. And I thought, perfect. We want to work the bodies. We want to look good. And I came up with Perfit, which stood for personal fitness. I love and that. I, it, Me too. Thank you. That's so and genius. I, Thank you. And I pitched that to the guy that was the manager of uh, fitness. It was fitness lady. And he's like, uh, you know, we'll try it. See what happens. You when know? you were a fitness so lady, what he didn't, you... it wasn't even like, oh, my gosh, this is great. Yeah. They were like, well, I don't know. But you what know, were you, you doing there? He hired you to do what yeah. in the first place? What did he hire you to do? You were hired well, as he, what? OK, so it was him and his wife. And when I came in, I had that background of, you know, the exercise science, the right. kinesiology, the dietetics. They were like, oh, my gosh, you may be overqualified, but this is what we're going to do. We're going to get the gym up and going. And when people come in, we want you to do the orientation and you design the fitness routines. Mm. So I designed and I took everybody through, but I was a one woman show. Yeah. And so they said, well, we're starting to grow because it was, it was a new concept, all women. And so they said, we need to hire another trainer, but every person we hire, we want you to train them to do what you do. Mm -hmm. So that kind of gave me that entrepreneur kind of um, attitude that, well, if I can train other people, you know, why can't I train my people one-on-one -on -one and make a business or career out of it. So I'm so I'm trying to do two things. And then when I presented to him, once we started to grow and get membership, I said, you know, I would like to do like one-on-one -on -one training. I mean, I'll still help the trainers that I've trained, but I want to do something separate from that. And they were like, shoot me down, like, well, you know, you can go ahead and try that, but we would love for you to be a manager eventually and make 15000 a year. And I'm like... <laughs> Ooh, what to I mean, aspire to? The 90s, I mean, I thought 15000 was a little low. <laughs> and and uh, anyway, and so they kind of shot me down, but it was one of those things I really believed in, you know, whatever was going in New York, California. I thought, you know, as trainers to the stars, I thought, I'm going to do that in Mississippi because, you know, you know, whatever you could afford, what I enjoyed, it wasn't about the money. It was about the passion for people. Yep. It was about bringing fitness, but everything that I've learned, instead of making it clinical and institutional and, you know, you're hurt, you're in the hospital, you got to get well. The doctor says, well, once you get out of here, eat good and you need to walk for about 30, 45 minutes. So, you know, when you take something that basic, I wanted to make it more personal for that individual, wherever they mm -hmm. were, 
whatever they needed. And so that's what I wanted to do. And that's why I was so good when I was in the health clubs, because I, I looked at people as not a commodity or a number of membership. Like we got 500 members. Let's give, you know, this is the 500 members. I was like, I, that didn't matter to me. But what mattered to me was the health of the individual and them coming to the facility or the health club or wherever they came, they came for help. And that's what I wanted to do was take that person personally and follow them through their journey. So Lisa, when, so you started pretty much, that's where it sort of all developed and culminated into this. Right. When right. did you actually step out of that to create your own company and build your own clientele? Right. Well, let's see. I got it. I got to fitness lady about 91. So I was there one year. I was there with them one year as I developed and helped them and helped them grow. And then in 92, that's when I had the idea to do the one on one. So mm -hmm. they again, they kind of shot that down a little bit. And I'll tell you the story. And that's kind of this whole Southern thing, too, that. I helped them continue on and build and promote Fitness Lady because I, I have never talked down about any club, health club I've been, hospital I've been. I've always promoted that facility. But when I was there, I mentioned to the owner, I said, I want to do this. They shot me down and said, do what you, you know, can. Well, when I started the business in 92, I had... There was a woman that was there. She It just, things kind of fell into my lap. She was an artist. I designed this logo and I called it Perfit Body by Lisa. Because again, it was kind of a silhouette. I tried to make it gender friendly where you could see like it could be a male, could be a female. One of those kind of hieroglyphic kind of things. And I paint, even painted to make it uh, gender friendly. I even had like hot pink and turquoise. I thought kind of female male. Mm -hmm. But obviously, when I when I showed that to a male, they're like, well, all I see is a female. And I thought, OK, mm. whatever. So mm. so I went with that and that was 92. And then all of a sudden I started getting more interest because people were watching me go through routines where I was with that person. I was focused on that person. I was attentive to that person. You know, I took them to the back. I took pictures and measurements. And that was that was what I did before anybody knew that's what you should do to really pay attention to somebody and to talk with them and then bring them back out and then go through a program. So within about two years doing that one-on-one, -on -one, all of a sudden the owners, this husband and wife said, you know, we noticed that you've been really busy and we're proud of you, but you're actually starting to look like a star here and we don't really want stars. We don't want people to be better than the other trainers. Wow. And I thought, <laughs> I, that's not what I was trying to do. I just was trying to showcase that there was something a little different than just being a trainer and orientating people to the machines or the equipment. Or I was even teaching, you know, aerobics. That was when kickboxing was yep. big, slide was big, step aerobics was big. But was you were doing a, per you were trying to personalize it. I was trying to personalize it and teaching water aerobics. Um, so I was trying to personalize it, but then it made me look like that I was up here and then there were just the fitness lady trainers. So that was the first time I noticed, I thought, oh my gosh, you know, to be the best of, of your field or, or to, 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 to promote another business, it, it looks like you're trying to downplay the product that they have is not good enough. And so in 94, they said, look, you're doing so great. Won't you just go off on your own? And I said, you know, I think I will. And so that's when I started going to other health clubs and I opened up, I did a little studio. I had a, a home at that time that was kind of tri-level and I did a little studio in my home before in-home training was ever actually big. I was the first personal trainer to have a business in 1992. In Mississippi. In Mississippi, yes, in Mississippi. So, I mean, there were, like I said, there were other trainers places, but they were like trainers. What actually got my attention was there was a, I think his name was Raul, and he was a tra he was the trainer to Cindy Crawford. I read an article about him training her, and I thought, Gunner? Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of Cindy Crawfords running around in the South, mm. a lot, and you just don't get known. But you, there are there are beautiful women here, and um, 
Anyway, I thought, well, there's there's a lot of beautiful women here. Why couldn't I train somebody? But you Lisa, know? do you think it's do you think it was like a male perspective because you were outshining him? Uh, well, could have been because it was the male. It was the husband, the one that actually said to me, you know, we can't have stars here. Oh, totally. So so getting back to the South, maybe, maybe. Just maybe that could have been like uh, we got too much female, mm. um, a little bit. You're taking you know, the you're taking the right. light away from him. That's true. Right. That right. shows because you what a stupid he, he, businessman yeah. he is. Because if he saw the gold he had and how much you right. could bring in uh, to their business, but isn't right. that a mentality in the South? It's the, it's the it's the it's the guy. It's a guy's thing in the South. Patriarchy. Right. Well, I mean that's. I mean, you know, as I grew up, you know, I had a great father. My parents were married 53 years until my father passed. So mm -hmm. I'm used to that kind of role model yeah. of the, the husband, the, the mother balance kind of thing. And, um, you know, now that I look back, of course, my father, you know, he he was very vocal, but my mother still kind of ruled the roost, I guess. And that helped me probably to go out on my own. Right. She yeah, but had, he had her own business. I also remember, Lisa, I grew up in Florida, as we were sharing before okay. the show. Um, in yeah. the 90s, you were yeah. saying, she was saying aerobics, step aerobics, all mm. this. I yeah. remember the, 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 the women were just instructors for, like, the fun aerobics and the leotards and all that. And the men right. had, had rule weights. of of all the free weights mm. and they had remember oh, yeah. nautilus i mean they just had like the easy oh, yeah. stuff oh, yeah. and they had you know no. and i remember the 90s were, for women it's like no you don't gain muscle no that's not a thing right yeah right i remember that and, well and even if you bodybuild there was an area there was an era yeah. from the 80s to the 90s that women were they started to become empowered and 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 probably maybe in the south I mean, it was all over there. There was starting to be more bodybuilding. But in the South, when women started to work out, they got empowered. And some people, and I did go into bodybuilding for a while. Mm. But then I was hit with some of the male friends of mine. They were like, well, you've got to start doing steroids if you want to get yeah. big. Yep. Muscular. But again, I'm like, where did that come from? Well, it's because the guys were doing that. Right. All of a sudden, the women, and I'm not knocking any woman that bodybuilds now, but I didn't want that that type of musculature i wanted to be fit and i wanted to kind of fall in line with my fitness attributes that i still wanted to you know feel cardiovascularly you know healthy and i wanted to be toned but i didn't want it to be big um so so you had that too. and they look masculine i mean you know a, oh. a good friend of mine she used to watch all the bodybuilding competitions with the women and it's yeah. interesting because they probably at the time did steroids. I guess now you're not supposed to, but at the time they did. And oh, they had fine. such big bodies. And it yeah. even, no, I don't know, probably the hormones or right. sweat, it just even changed their face to look even right. more masculine. Mm -hmm. So I don't care if you had makeup right. on and yeah. your hair was done yeah. up, you yeah. looked masculine. Mm -hmm. Right. But, but, and I don't know if that's in general that. You know, when a woman thinks about working out, I mean, at the time, I think our concept has changed. And, you know, mm. later on, I'm sure we'll fast forward. But at that time, between the 80s and the 90s, I mean, we 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 want to feel empowered. You know, remember the voting rights? Yep. And we finally started to emerge, you know, politically that we had a voice. And I think some women use fitness as a platform to show that outward strength. But it's that inward strength. And I think from the South, I mean, I can personally say that coming from an era of, you know, you know, you show up, you be seen, but we don't want you, we don't want to hear you, mm -hmm. but, but you can be there, mm -hmm. but, but we don't want to hear what you have to say. Well, you can't take center stage. You always this in the supportive, think, you're supporting. supporting. Right. And, and again, it's that, well, and again, you know, with that person I work with, it was again, you know, you make us look good, but you know, you, you remember where you were, Ugh. you, we just, we brought you in. So, so, you know, that kind of wore on me and I, and I just, but you know it, what, Lisa, it, it what? wore, it wore on you, but in, mm -hmm. in, in reality, it was probably the best thing that happened to you to sort of right. catapult you to go to the next level. Right. Right. I, I will, I would agree with you with that. Mm. I mean, because again, with that comes, 
you know, you open yourself up that I always had a passion to want to help people and I wanted a platform. And every time that I tried to like be more outspoken or tried to, you know, I was on some covers of magazines and I was always sought out because they're like, she's got something. But again, she's from the South. So we don't want her, you know, I don't, I mean, and again, it wasn't, it was some publications, even the paper here, you know, I did a perfect training tips. It was my column I did for six years and I can brag about this and y'all appreciate this, but cause we all know that sometimes exercise, you're kind of like, okay, what do I need to do for this ex you know, for my legs, for my glute, for my arms. I did an, a series of eight exercises. I had eight clients. I did that for six years and there was not one exercise I repeated twice Wow, for six years. And I did like, it was like, you know, I did the buttocks, the thighs, the chest, the back, the shoulders, the arms, the abs, and the waist. And, uh, you know, if we count that up, hopefully that's eight if I didn't miss one. But I, I never repeated any exercise. And I thought, my gosh, I could have done a book. But, you know, people were like starting to come out with books. I kind of hit it right there on the cusp that, you know, fitness kind of got like a boom in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you put aside the bodybuilding, then it became more like, well, the women just wanted to be fit. And so that whole fitness, I think the Miss Fitness started becoming real popular. But by then, I was already enthralled in my business. And I was so busy um, that when I did my website, I think in 92 or 94, that's when websites, as you know, you kind of get your domain. Right. And I got my domain, perfectbodytraining.com. I have not touched that at all <laughs> until what, within the last couple of years, I started thinking, oh my gosh, Instagram, YouTube. I thought I've got to start doing something to catch up now with this younger generation. So I'm mm -hmm. kind of jumping way ahead, but that's when some of us old school people, it's like you kind of set on something. It's like, okay, everything's going great. I got all these clients. I'm teaching these classes. I'm going to a motivational talks. I don't need anything else. So, so where I am today I feel like I've served my purpose for Mississippi, so to speak, mm -hmm. and I love it what I've done because we're still, even though it's, you know, everybody looks at us as the, the fattest or the most obese mm -hmm. state in the nation. We're really not. It's just for the population. And, you know, you take in the numbers of diabetes and um, poverty and so social economic levels. It puts us low, but we're not the fattest in the nation. And people don't realize that, but, but because people are trying, but I, I'm kind of jumping ahead, but it's like, I, I, I can only do what I can do. And there's health clubs, people join those. But as far as my service goes, working individually, I want to kind of get to that. I want to get to that next level. And, um, well, you um, need to move out of Mississippi. I will. <laughs> uh, that's what people say. It's like, there's other places that are fit, you know, that you can really help and inspire people. And, uh, and, you know, and I, and I believe that's where, you know, like I said, you know, um, you know, Boca going down there a lot, going to Palm Springs, you know, I, I just, you, you get invigorated with these different places. And what I try to do when I have traveled is to bring that back. And I have a lot of clients that do travel and they're like, oh my gosh, I mean, you know, training with you is, you know, it's like, it's like, just like where we went to wherever, you know, different Club places, yeah. you know, right. You know, it's like, we're getting the best of both worlds right here at home. Lisa, and you I, are online right now. I, online. Yeah. Train yes. online. <laughs> well, you did that, but you did that during COVID, didn't yeah. you? I did. I, I did Zoom fitness yep. and um, I did FaceTime fitness where, you know, people would, you know, FaceTime me and everything. So I did that. And that was. But it was local. As we all can say, that was such a different time. Um, but it was but, only local, right? You didn't, you didn't. It, right. It was only, it was only local. It was with my clients and some of the classes that I teach, they would join. And, uh, you know, so. So I stayed, you know, again, that was kind of, if you have to say that was kind of the trend at the time, I try to stay up with the trends and I always kind of want to say I'm at the cutting edge of the trend to kind of know what's coming up next because you guys know trends come and go. I mean, but I'll tell you something, Lisa, social media, I guess we have briefly talked about it. It's really all about, you know, it's a lot of it is social media. You know, right, like right. back in the old days, yeah. you take an ad, you know, and it really was hard for an individual 
to sort of catapult their business anything right. outside of local you know um right. because there was no such thing as the internet but now that there's the internet it's like you just said it i mean you know you could write a book you know and it could be self published um mm -hmm. and you sell it on amazon you know you could start to promote you know fitness classes and do mm -hmm. it on zoom and charge a fee and yeah. you can reach the world i mean in right. essence you know so the right. internet is there as a tool to sort of spread and i'm now i'm talking like a real publicist manager now but i mean <laughs> you know the 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 the, the 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 capabilities that you have right now at your disposal yeah great moving right. is great but you know not moving you could still attain that mm -hmm. outside of mississippi by right. just utilizing you know x threads instagram right. youtube um right. facebook all that right. stuff is there for you and it's pretty much free it's right. like i said to you you know like you know you see traction like what causes more traction what makes someone more popular on the internet it really doesn't mean look a lot of people on the internet don't know shit. okay these youtube kids that have billions of followers you know, for makeup tips, you know, yeah. they're 14 years old, they're monetizing it and they're making millions. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. you know, it, it, and monetizing isn't easy, but when you get to a certain level, then you hire a team to do that. But it's, if anything, now you're not at the end of your road. You actually are, can have a rebirth and be at the beginning of a new like trajectory. That. Right. Can I, I like that. Can I ask I like you that. something, um, specific about fitness? Sure, Ronnie. No, no Mara. That's Mara. <laughs> oh, Mara, Mara. I, I'll be what? Ronnie today. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ronnie. Here's so, Mara. okay. I was really fit when I went, you know, I would say I was like 34 to like my late 30s because I, it's, I've always battled weight gain. But what I did was I did this one book by this trainer named Jackie Warner. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, Jackie. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. And right. it worked like a charm. But then as I started to get older, I'm now 40, um, 48 now. Um, yeah. I'm finding okay. it doesn't work as good. Things are extremely difficult for me um, to uh, it's just not as easy. And I'm wondering if age and hormones, if this is a legit thing that can make it harder for me to, to the old bag of tricks doesn't seem to work as well. If yeah. at all. Yeah. Well, um, depending on like what you're following, uh, if you're doing the same thing and I, I don't know how her, uh, how her programs are actually designed that if they're based on what they call periodization, periodization is when you do something for a certain period of time, mm -hmm. the, in the sports uh, industry or in, as an athlete, you have times of, uh, preseason, you have mm. uh, uh, off season, and you've got postseason. So you have different uh, categories of training, and based on that, you take that individual or that athlete, and you take them through these uh, different modes of training. So they're not always breaking down their body, mm -hmm. and they're giving their bodies a chance to rest so they can get ready for the end season when they're having to compete. So uh, based on what you were telling me, I don't know how Jackie has her programs designed, but I know for me, I have taken that principle because I was an athlete. So I take that same principle principle, and I call it the perfect periodization. So I take a client and for every four to five weeks, mm -hmm. we'll do a certain routine based on their main goals. You have a foundation. Mm -hmm. We all have a foundation that we all need and we want. And not to go over all that, but it's just the basic foundation. It's, you know, we all, all, everybody says, I need to burn body fat. I need to make sure my heart stays healthy because I have this, the pre, uh, um, the pre, you know, cancerous, or yeah. we have predispositions to, you know, whatever's in our family. And then, and then you get to the third thing. Everybody's like, oh my God, my core. You know, it's like I got to really work my abs because that's where a lot of fat settles and that's because of poor posture. So that brings us to the next thing. You need structural strength. Mm. And then now the big thing is, as you get older, we want to feel more balanced and, you know, better. But it is body. true, though, that as you age but, as a woman, that it, it does get harder to take those pounds off. Right. It, you know? 
Well, it does because mm. you said something about hormones. Yeah. That, mm-hmm. that as you get older, once you once you go past the age of 25 into your 30s, the body is already aging on a progressive amount that, and, and again, it just depends on the stress factors of your life. Mm-hmm. I mean, what you do, you know, it could be social, social economic, it could be, you know, eating, it could be all these other factors play a role in that. You know, so you start breaking all that down to find out where can we improve as you get older. But just in general, between 25 and 35, that's when you're going to start noticing the hormone effects. Well, I was fine and, then. I'm talking about now I'm in my late 40s. Yeah, so no, 48. but what she's saying is that's when the body starts. Right. starts to it's change. Change. But we don't. But we don't realize that because you're living your best life. You're young. You feel good. It's like, ah, it's, it was, I'll worry about 45, 50 when I get there. And so, you know, you put that off. But then when you get there, that's what you're talking about. I have gotten there. I have done this Jackie Warner program, mm-hmm. and now it's not serving me. So it's almost like you've it's done that harder. program. Your body has gotten accustomed to it. And now it's like you need to kind of change it up. So... Um, that's where I was talking about the periodization to change it up. But I, like I said, without knowing, does she have a periodization? Once you do, like, this is a 12-week oh, yeah. program, eight-week program. Oh, don't you get know, me you- wrong. I wasn't always doing her program. Like, I would stop for a year or two. But my point is, is when I started up again, it's a lot yeah. harder to stick to it. And, and it's a lot harder for me in my late right. 40s than it was in my mid 30s. But that's makes, in general. Yeah. I mean, that's in general at life. I mean, you know, it's right. like even if you have a diet program like Weight Watchers, yeah. okay? Right. You you right. you know, when you're in your 30s and you go on the Weight Watcher program, mm-hmm. you can lose weight faster, you know? Oh. You're in your 50s or your 60s, you're on the same Weight Watcher program mm-hmm. and you've got to right. work harder. Maybe in your 30s and 40s you didn't incorporate exercise. The pounds were just flying right. off because as she said, you have an active life. But now you're 50, yeah. 60 you're settled in a job you're a little bit yeah. more sedentary yeah. you don't have right. life you have a family you have children you don't have that right. time to carve for yourself so oh, you're only doing one thing of the program and that's you know cutting right. out the food mm-hmm. but to have right. a complete weight loss and, and a total transformation it takes right. a lot of stuff it's it's yes you stop the food you, you know you that's cup. what i did and on the program in my th- it's always been right. hard but for who me. cares about your 30s what's done that's over with that's 20 years ago you have to look yeah. at what you are now 20 well, you are. almost right. but you're looking 10. you said you're 48 mm-hmm. okay you like said 35 okay so it's more than 10 okay yeah. so calm yeah. down all right you're, you're getting old lady i'll tell you right now you're not, you're getting fucking old like the rest that. of us Every time I look at okay me. but my point is at different stages there's yeah. different things you need to either add or diminish right. there's right. another thing right. are you this is kind of a uh, no, I'm not in question. menopause. No, no, but are you right. perimenopause? Do you know uh, yeah, if you're probably. perimenopause? And I, I would like to add, I'm yeah. 58. I'm a little older than you. Um, I went through my metamorphosis after 46. I was, ne- I was not like you, Lisa. You were an athlete. Oh. I bowed to you. I was the last oh. one picked at dodgeball. Yeah, Whenever we ran around the tree, I was the last one in. I was not <laughs> an athlete. <laughs> and I became a personal trainer at 46 because of health issues. I went okay. to you know, five yeah. chiropractors, decompression, acupuncture. I tried everything. My hip was hurting. My right. back was hurting. Mm. Two Western okay. medical doctors wanted to fuse my back. Never got it done. I now have five herniated discs. I'm 58, and I'm in better shape than I was in college. And it was. And you do have to factor in hormones. Your hormones yeah. change. You start right, going into right. that period. I started getting um, bone loss yeah. because of my hormones. Finally, right. like you said, fast forward, I went to this one chiropractor. I had to like five chiropractors for two years um, mm-hmm. because my husband said, hey, I went to a, a, a health fair and I met with somebody. I'm like, but I've been to, through it all. And, you know, I don't want just medication. He's like, just go. He put me with a corrective exercise specialist personal trainer within two weeks i didn't hurt anymore oh my god and that's when i got so into it and i started researching and i would always ask her questions she's like you have to become a personal trainer <laughs> you have to become a personal yeah. trainer i'm like no i yeah, i'm in pr i mean I, who does that at, at 46 she's like because you are walking billboard mm-hmm. if women going into their 50s see you and that you're healthy mm-hmm. they'll believe mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. and that's I, I took the passion but i'm like god i'm not athletic and I'm now, I'm still not athletic, mm-hmm. but I'm in better health and all my stats are better. And yes, it is hormones. And you know, your metabolism is also affected yeah. by your, your living area. You live in Los Angeles, she lives in Mississippi. We have, yeah. we have things True. that affect our, 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 our metabolism 
in dry cleaning, in what's in the carpeting, in what's in our foods, in what's in our detergent. Sure. So there are a lot of factors. But sure. that's what I'm saying with Lisa, with you, you know, you you said, I'm not going to out your age, but you're 57. And granted, you've Correct. done this for a long time. But, mm -hmm. you know, you do, you know, you don't have one exercise regiment for every single person. You tailor it to that person, what their limitations are. You know, right. you tailor right. it. And, right. you know, and like the whole Jackie Warner thing, or even what's that other one? The one we talked about before earlier today. It wasn't Jackie. Jillian Michaels. Jillian Michaels. Oh, Jillian. Jillian Michaels you know, with the well, she has variety. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, what I'm, but what I'm saying is, you know, you get Correct. a book, you know, you get a book and that's right. one part of the program. You know, if you could afford right. the Jillians or the Jackies, you're going to get a more tailored thing that is going to be for you. And I will bet you, you'd probably get better results that you're comfortable with. Oh, but if I one on one with Jackie. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But you put out a book yeah, to can't. reach the masses. It doesn't mean that everyone's going to respond to that. Really Lisa, if you, right. if you had your right. eight exercises, Lisa, and you yeah. videotaped them for me, I would take that on my phone and follow it in the gym. And that's right, what I right. look at all these YouTube videos of, like you said, no offense to anybody, but I see so many YouTube videos out there of just w girls that are skinny, but they're not yeah. fit. And they're like, this is how you do abs. And this is how you do a plank. I'm like, that's not how you do a right. plank. And so I love to follow with my phone in the gym. Like, well, right. what do I feel like doing now? You did that. I'd right. follow you. Right. Okay. Well, that's you, great. People want because... variety. You know, right. and they want to right. be able to go on their phone and then you can start a membership. Remember Tammy Lee Webb, uh, mm -hmm. Buns of Steel? Yeah. She still has a membership club. Oh, Tammy Lee yeah. Webb. There were oh so many. And it's all online. Yeah. And it's Buns so of online. Steel. That's right. Mm -hmm. I think there were different series. Yep. To that. Buns, Buns of, of Power. I don't know how many there were, but Susan I'm like, Powers. wow. Oh, no. She, she, you know? Sorry. So, but, but, but that is so true. I mean, so it's like, Mara, what you were talking about, like with, with, with hormones, mm -hmm. it's like draw attention to the stage that you are right now. And so, you know, it's kind of like what I did. I went to, you know, now these nurse practitioners are getting into this hormone specialty because a lot of the OBGYNs, they don't really want to mess with it because it's kind of like some people are scared about hormone therapy and, mm -hmm. and right. And take an extra little testosterone or yeah. balance estrogen because this is kind of I'm not going to say it's new agey, but it's 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 new lifestyle medicine that a lot of people want to do, but they still don't really have the correct formula because everybody's so different. Well, also um, Lisa, you know, it's it's something. It's all it all goes into Western medicine yeah. and that FDA yeah. approval. If it's not going to make right. some money for some drug company or yeah. some lobbyist, you know, that's right. why you know nat um, nature paths and right. you know acupuncturists and Eastern medicine mm -hmm. really right. isn't taken seriously, and there's it's like they're they're, right. they're like in a mystery like well how do you know how much to take and the western medicine right. continues to propagate that mystery and fear behind right. it so well, then what happens what people do when you have this fear it's kind of like you know you can you know you have all these exercises and at the time women's health and shape magazine everybody sees all these exercises like oh i guess i need to be doing this i need to be doing that and he, and it's like you get inundated with so many different things then you're like I don't know what to do. And then what happens? The you don't do it. Tells you what? I, don't, I don't want to do anything. Right. And so, so that's And also, when, let so, me add, this society, absolutely. at least the states, everything yeah. is immediate gratification. So if you yeah. do it for two weeks and nothing's happening, you're on a diet for right. two weeks, you're doing an exercise program for two weeks, and it's right. not working, right. automatically it's not immediate gratification because that's the media, that's what how this right. works. It's like, I give up, I'm not doing it, it's not working for me. Right. Right, right. That is so true. That is so true. Because I think consistency is, is is the word or the key word to anything in life. I mean, so you have to take consistency of doing something. You just got to find that something that, that fits, you know, your lifestyle. So it's kind of like what Ronnie was talking about. You know, I'm, I'm getting ready to do this new longevity is uh, it's a pitch word that uh, I think, uh, Gay Ann, we were talking about the Blue Zones. Yep. Or there's, anyway, by the, by the way, there's a documentary. Yeah, I know. It's, good. it's about the Blue Zone, and like it's right. Loma Linda's one of the cities. Um, I'll have Lisa explain Linda, it. Yeah, but it's California. Loma Linda, it's Japan, it's Sardinia, and it's another. It's Explain right. what the Blue Zone is, Lisa. Well, the Blue Zone is just different regions that this particular guy, Dan Berletti, Ber Ber uh, Boteller, 
um, I, if I'm saying his name right, but anyway, he, he toured these different five blue zones where centurions, where you live to be a hundred. Oh, or I more. saw that on or Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, yeah. On Netflix. Mm-hmm. And they're like, so he's trying to kind of figure out mm-hmm. in these different areas, what is the common factor? Mm-hmm. And, um, based on that, it's kind of like what we're, we're searching for with our life. It's like, kind of like that fountain of youth It's like, what is yeah. the common factors? What, what is everybody doing that I can start incorporating into my life mm-hmm to make me feel I'm living my best life. But you know what's funny is like Sardinia. I'm I'm not Sardinian, but I'm Italian. It's a carb vegetarian diet. It's carb and vegetables and meat occasionally. And yet you go to Loma Linda, Mm -hmm. which it is the Adventists and pretty much the Adventists are on like a vegetarian diet. So, and like, I don't remember, I really don't remember the, the other, uh, what the other ones were. Asia, well, Okinawa, Japan, mm-hmm. and then Greece. Uh, uh, is it Akira, Akira, Greece? But 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 all that to say, in all those different areas, it's like you know, it's how you're raised. I mean, I'm raised in the South, and I think a lot of people when Fritz. they think of the South, South, they think of barbecue, mm, fried, 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 food, yep. fried chicken, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, sweet tea, which I'm drinking tea, but it's mm-hmm. half and half, right? Um, but But it's where you're raised and how you accommodate that food in your body. And it's like whatever your body gets used to. But it's like with anything, and and, and just to kind of do these blue zones, it's like with anything, if you eat carbs, I mean, you know, they say if you eat too many carbs, you kind of feel bloated, you Mm -hmm. get Crohn's disease, celiac disease, you get all these diseases. Well, you know, we all are going to have a propensity to, to get something but it's 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 the balance of what you do. Right. Um, I, I think yeah. I liked where I think it was in Okinawa when they said you eat to your eighty percent full. Mm-hmm. So what does that tell you? You don't overeat. Right. Mm-hmm. So it, I can eat fried chicken. I'm not going to gain any. I'm not going to get any weight from eating fried chicken. You know why? Because mm-hmm. I'm not going to eat three pieces of fried chicken. Right. When people so, when so, people ask how do I how do I not gain weight or how do I lose weight? It's like I get them off diet. Stop dieting. The basic right. thing is eat. Don't right. overeat. You know, enjoy. Exactly. Like Don't. when that's true. When I when I lost a lot of weight, um, mm-hmm. and I you know I used to be a size sixteen, so I'm an eight now. So, but I've got that oh, wow. I've got that like curvy Italian body, and I'm five one, so I feel fat. But I know I'm not. I, I've seen people my age, and I look way better. But it doesn't matter. Um, but the point what I'm saying oh. is when I lost the weight after going on diet after diet right. and getting disappointed because it wasn't working fast enough right, i right. decided right, yeah. my whole thing wasn't even i even hate exercise i hate it um it was portion control and so yeah. everyone's like well did you eat ice cream did you i said you know what when i wanted ice cream i always had a pint in the refrigerator in the freezer when i yeah. wanted ice cream i'd go in because it was i was like living alone at the time i would go in yeah. and get a teaspoon and mm-hmm. i would like eat like savor every ounce of that one teaspoon because I believe that it all is up here and a diet diets don't work because it's telling it's forbidding you to do yep. things and it depends on your personality type and nobody tells me I don't nobody can tell me <laughs> I can't do something so it's it sets you I think a diet sets you up for failure because it's telling you you can't so when yeah. you can't, what do you want? You want to do. Right. So right. Uh, even when, yeah. even like McDonald's French fries, they're my favorite. Okay. So yeah. I love French fries. They are yeah. Nice. So like I would do a drive through when I wanted McDonald's French fries and I'd get mm-hmm. the, the Happy Meal, the little one, you know, yes. and I would eat a few. And when right. my taste buds it went directly to here, mm-hmm. right. that whole mechanism, when that was satisfied, right. Then right. I didn't want, I didn't feel like I wanted to eat it. I didn't right. guilt myself. I just never right. stopped myself in indulging in things I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And I right. lost, you know, 45 pounds. What I also loved about that documentary of the Blue Zones is that he went into lifestyles of yep. these yep. people that lived to be 100. Live. And so much of it was, was, was like they hardly were on a phone. I don't think they were ever on the internet. And they <laughs> had all these close connections with each other. They and they, they yeah. would sit around and play games and charades and all this stuff right. and, just, and just love each other's yes, company. Yeah, 
No, less stress, exactly. And less they stress. walked places. Yeah. They was, walked. So they didn't really exercise in a gym. Right. But they were, they, or they were gardening all day. They were gardening. They were doing a right. they Minimum. Just enough intensity, going up steps, just enough intensity yep. that it wasn't vigorous, but it was. But, it was, but they also know, smoked. Some of them smoked. Some of them drank. They right. but did. But connection was so important. But the point but is. 10 packs a day. Actually. No, but exactly. they. No, but they, they yes. did it for, if they were 100, they did it for like maybe. 80 years yeah. you know what <laughs> right. i mean and they didn't have cancer right. or anything like that so it really is about the quality yep. of right. life and it in really this was. country you know right. europe is so different i mean i've been there so many times right. for work and right. but it's like outside of the united states mm -hmm. um i haven't been to asia i know it's sort of like a machine in china and so I, I i know they don't have all of that but in the united states you know it's 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 never rest. It's work, 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 work to get, 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 get. And then you retire at 65, 67, 69, 70, right. whatever the freaking sliding right. scale is now for whatever thing. And, you know, when you're 70 and you've worked your whole life with stress and this and that and not really taking care of yourself. Well, at 70, there are no golden years. You're fucked. I mean, bottom <laughs> line, you're fucked. Especially when you don't have friends and you don't have um, you're isolated and lonely. You know, right. so uh, Gan said something about por portion control. My clients always had resistance to counting calories. Like, okay, let's do it whatever oh way God. you want. Portion control oh is counting God. calories. It's just like that we have such a bad relationship with counting calories. Right. Eyeball it. You know that banana's 100. But bottom line, it's like, you know if you're eating more than you need. Yeah. But do you, got, you, right. do you ladies remember, I almost said girls, but um, <laughs> I'll take it. Our, our <laughs> place, when, when we moved all, all our parents' um, stuff out of their home and we were packing up dishes, and I said, remember those dishes with the birds, the blue dishes? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were yeah. so smaller to what we get now at restaurants. Plates are humongous. Yeah, that is true. Oh, yeah. Well, how about if you go to a restaurant, forget about what they're charging, which is crazy, <laughs> but you go right. to a restaurant, mm -hmm. you know, like when did all you can eat buffets oh, yeah. come? Oh, I mean, like, I, first of all, I won't okay. eat at a buffet because I find it, even right. before COVID, very unsanitary oh, because mm -hmm. I people I watch and I see people <laughs> sneeze over the shit, kids picking oh, okay. their fucking nose, yeah. and then they go grab yeah. shit. So yeah. I, I'm no, nope, yeah. I will not do buffet. But then no, no. you just, no. sit there and observe it's a waste of money right. for me to go to buffet for a lot of reasons it's, yeah i yeah i you know i like i like find i love i love the culinary experience i like to be waited on yeah that's, that's why you thing. go but out. i don't think it's a southern thing i think we all as women i mean i love to be waited on me too um you know so i love the finer things of life and uh these restaurants i mean buffets i just it's almost like a you know it's like a you know Farm, farm, you know, farm. To, that that is the farm to table right there. Yeah, Where's the little lifestyle animals going in to eat the trough. And you, I, you I mentioned like the United that. States, but in the United States, we are mug city. We are all in mugs. You still go back to South America or, or United States? I'm not yeah. sure about you. Uh, uh, in Asia, you still use yeah. a coffee cup. Or a tea. Well, what, what's wrong with the mug? Because it's we drink more. more, and all of a sudden we want more. We well, wait a minute. Wait balls. a minute. Wait a minute. I mean, but what's the point? Like, I don't, you know, like drink. I mean, not alcohol, but oh, yeah. drinking. That means like, drink. that's shit. Okay, yeah. but if I'm gonna sit here and make, you know, a cup of coffee at the house or a mm -hmm. cup of tea, you know. I'm going to maybe make two cups. So because I don't want to get up and down and up and down, mm. I will make a mug of tea or a, or a mug of coffee. That's two cups right. of coffee. I know I take that mug. I know anything more than two cups of coffee with my personality. <laughs> um, I'm going to be jittery and you better watch out. You know what I mean? You know that. But then now that this has led to the ventis at Starbucks, the frappes, with the, the whipped cream, yes. and they're all huge. Right. You know Isn't what it I mean? weird? Right. Because we're, a, we're, 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 I think right. you, someone said, and I can't remember, it is is it is um we're, we're in a state of gluttony right now it's I was thinking, you know what state. i'll add to that you know getting back to like what i do as far as the training goes because and and i think in general it's almost like we're being sabotaged yep it's like every day if it's not political sabotage religious sabotage friendship sabotage someone or something is always going to come into our life to what to bring it back to what are you gonna do? Yeah. Right. 
what do you do for you? Yeah. You know, and, and that's what, you know, kind of in a way I have my clients. It's like, <laughs> where are you right now? What, what is your life dictating to you? Or what do you want to do with your life? Mm -hmm. And based on that, you know, you got all these things coming at you that can inundate you with like, I am so confused. Well, if you're confused, then step back, think about it. Hire a lifestyle coach, ha hire someone or a personal trainer, hire someone to set you down to say, tell me about what's going on in your life right now. Right. But let me stop you. I'm going to stop you. I'm going to have to interrupt you because that is advice for people who are privileged that have mm -hmm. the money, you know, and they want to know, you know, people that aren't privileged that can afford that. Okay. They say, why are people that are on, uh, below the line of poverty or poverty level, why are they so obese? Why are they so this? Well, it's because the government gives them food, gives them stuff, but it's a bunch of crap that they're eating, yeah. you know? And, you know, instead of, you know, giving them good food to eat, they're giving them everything with preservatives mm -hmm. and bullshit and then right. you know and then yeah. they're they they can't afford gym memberships they can't afford trainers yeah you know right. so you know we, you know so how do they you know you know and it's you know what you know what i would do gay in with that yep. you know that because what you're saying right there that's what infuriates me because i'm thinking you know how hard back in the day our parents, well, and I'm, again, I can only speak for the South. They had etiquette classes. <laughs> they had own home economic classes that taught people how to do, like, I think I had a class called Family Life. And they taught you how to eat. And they taught you about family. And they taught you about how to, you know, sit at the table. And I, I call it Life 101. I feel that if they had more of those type of classes in high, junior high, or high school because they always say, well, it's the parents' fault. Well, if the parent, if they're working two or three jobs, you know, speaking of a poverty level, if they're working two or three jobs, they don't have time to like take time out for the kids. Right. Although they want to, but they can't. Right. And so what what and and I don't want to put it back on the state, but in the school systems, they could offer these classes and they could hire. I mean, I know about the gym teachers like, well, exercise is so important. Well, exercise is. But the other factors of life Nutrition, are important. Yeah. How to eat good food, how to ba how to balance a chicken, but when you get in high school, mm -hmm. right? All these things they should they should bring that back. And if they do bring that back, then more people will be educated right. in values of life. And if you value life, you will take that and you'll do the right thing with your life. And uh, and and yeah, I mean, I mean, I could be hired as like you know. You know, look, a school, to be honest, a school could hire you. If well, they the, she wouldn't and, make much. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I, I'm I just, but I'm, 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 I have done that with schools. I have done that. I've gone in to teach the basics of fitness, the basics. But it's of not a program. It's, it, not a, it's not a one program. I go in as a guest speaker. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the difference. I mean, I went to Catholic school. OK. Yeah. And it was okay. very regimented, you know. Yeah. And yes, we got you know, we were taught all of the stuff that you were saying that happened. You know, right. I don't remember yeah. what we called it, but we yeah. we had those lessons. And yeah. so, yeah. you know, it made a difference. But somehow that fell off of the curriculum and have, have made it important. You know, right. and it's money. really sad. Money. They My, well, but the, the thing is, they cut money. Yeah. Like, they what do they cut? Programs. When schools have to art. cut programs, they cut music, art. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. They've right? cut all the things that are really, and like, you know, music. Like, okay, when I was in school, not that I had a bad background, not I had a really good life, but, you know, my passion and my escape was music, mm -hmm. musical theater, yeah. acting uh -huh. class. I did that. You know, mm -hmm. and that was like my escape, my getaway. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed it. Plus a million other freaking clubs that I belong mm -hmm. to. But they mm -hmm. keep ch uh, cutting that away, away, away. So you've got the of course, these kids are bored at school, you right. know, because there's nothing there that they enjoy. And really, who really loves to like to learn? You Some know? kids love math. <laughs> yeah. And those are the ones that are bullied. Those are the ones that are bullied. Those are the ones I can't relate to. 
Yeah. No, but, but the thing is, it's well rounded. That's what Gay Ann's saying. Is I, I yeah. sucked at, oh, at, yeah. at PE, but I looked forward to it because it's getting out of the classroom. Right, exactly. I wasn't great right. at math, but I wanted to be right. decent at it. And I love the arts, right. not because I was going to be a musician, but you need a variety. Right. You need to explore. You do. You, do. you need you a do. break. Yeah, because it, as you do get older, what, what you're learning when you're younger, that is the foundation. You're taking that into your older age. And if you don't have that basic foundation, I mean, again, I, and I think going back to the blue zone, it's about a routine. Right. You got to have yeah. a routine to do something in life, mm -hmm. to make yourself accountable. If you can't hire the trainer, you got to be accountable to yourself. Yeah. And what you're learning through your stages of life, through school, going into an older adulthood, you've got to have like a basics, a basis to work from. And But uh, also, you know, if you go back to that and go into inward and spirituality and self-esteem right. you know right. if you right. if you don't value who you are you don't love right. yourself you have a low self-esteem you are insecure right. you're in fear and that and and you right. and you perpetuate that then right. guess what you know there is no hope for you so yeah. you, you don't have the 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 gumption you don't have the passion to do anything because you know, maybe you were told when you were in school, you're stupid, you know, mm -hmm. maybe you're not talented or, mm -hmm. you know, in families, you know, you're not worth it. You're worthless or the father abused the children. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's 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 again so much conditioning that begins in mm -hmm. infancy and mm -hmm. teenage that really bring right. that really sort of dictate who you are. But right. some people can get out of that. Some people, you know, right. they work on themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, you just said right. it, it, they don't have a reason. It sounded to me like they don't have a reason to propel. They don't have a reason right. to live. They have and, to get themselves out of that mess. And themselves. so we need right. a purpose. Right. Each human right. being needs a purpose. purpose. I mean, yes, you right. had pressure right. of always being like Miss, Miss Mississippi, Miss this, Miss that. But you had a purpose. You know, right, and now right. you're living your purpose. Everyone who thrives right. is because they have that, a purpose. So people need meaning. For right. Life. And we all were fortunate in the way we were raised. We were given opportunities right. to right. find our passion. Our, our family supported our passions, even though they were crazy, some of mine. But we had that support. We had that love. We had that balance. We, right. we had that. And, you know, because of what has happened, how this, the, the world has evolved, it, it, it has taken the focus out of that, you know? Definitely. And the, right. and the whole comparison thing. And the whole comparison. You see on the internet, like on Instagram. Right. and I mean, it's become half backbiting. Of it's not even true. Most of it's not right. even. I mean, think about it. Women, right. look, right. why do men excel? Men excel in this town because they're blowing smoke up their ass, patting each other on the back, and they're arrogant, okay? Mm. Women. They do that to a point, and then if it's a little bit competitive, they'll right. stab you in the back, they'll talk you down, and, and that is, unfortunately, I don't know why, and again, I think women would be, and we've talked about this numerous times, that women would be stronger if we just stuck together instead of, you know, like lift each other up, not right. bring each other down, and you rarely right. see that in guys, and if guys do it, they do it as sport. Well, like Lisa yeah. said, you either yeah. you either idolize somebody and want to be like them, or you gossip about them and bring them down, yeah. cancel them. Yeah. Well, if someone's yeah. insecure and jealous about you, you know, and, and that's in work. I mean, it's in life. You know, it's you know, it's 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 not a good place to be in. And then you know, like for me, you know, I've excelled at work and stuff like that. And there, it hasn't been easy. You know, mm -hmm. I've had people try to backbite me and stuff like that. And, you know, it, it, it sort of sets you back and then you go into a pity party. But as a Capricorn, I sit there and go, you know what? I'm not going to let them get me down. I, I know who I am. So, you know, you can put me down. But then when I come back, I'm going to I rise. And not only do I rise, I'm eight steps ahead of you now. Right. Right. And I think going back once we I guess that's that's that part of the human I guess, uh, what's the word, God-given or divine-given innate sense of our energy on this earth, eventually we all get inspired at some point in our life 
to search, yep. to search for what is uh, healthy for us, yep. what is uh, a sound job for us. It's like, uh, as far as your gift, you, you had to find out what is, what is my gift that I can contribute to society. So once you find out what your gift is and then your friendships, friendships are like seasons, they can come and go. And then you've got to decide what friend is going to be with me as I go through my life. And then there are friends that come in that inspire you to get off your ass. Right. And so, and so, those are the ones that you keep yeah. because my, my yeah. biggest pet peeve are people complain, 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 right. and they're well, complacent. <laughs> that right. the, you know, the word complacency, settling. Right, right, right. Like right. no one should ever right. fucking settle in their life because you have right. to, you know, and I don't want to be judgmental. I'm not saying if you settle, you settle. I mean, that's good on you. I don't give a shit. But <laughs> for me, you know, for at least for me, I always want to grow. I want to learn more. I want to yeah. be enlightened. I don't want to be complacent. You know, right. I want to question. I mean, my friends say that it drives. Well, obviously, this is why I'm on the show, because I ask a lot of questions. But my thing from a kid was why, why, why? And it's annoying as fuck to the person, but it's not annoying to the right person because right. you are you're saying, a mover and a shaker. Yep, yeah, it, you're a mover and a shaker. And it's like, I right. want to learn because this is right. my point of view right now. But my right. point of view isn't the end all fucking be all. So mm -hmm. enlighten me on your points of view, because maybe right. I will have a different breath and a different take on a situation. It's all about growing. You know, I don't want to be poor. I don't want to live paycheck to paycheck. I, I, I want more to life and I don't want to settle. Right. God and that's damn it. <laughs> and that's, and, no, and I get you. And that's how I feel. You know, I love Mississippi, but when, but what happens every state, not just Mississippi, but every state's known for something. They have a bad and a good. Right. It's just like a person. We have good traits. We have bad traits. We have strong traits. We have weak traits. So it's like for Mississippi, for me, Mississippi has served me. I mean, this is my root. Uh, my interesting story is that my last name is Newman. But, you know, you start diving into your family history. You know, I was wondering why I craved bread and butter so much. Well, I come to find out that my grandfather was a Brevard hey. at, in South Mississippi. He was adopted by the Newman family. So he's, you know, the French, you know, yeah, came down to Mississippi, you know. So I'm a Brevard, not a Newman. So it's almost like I feel like I'm adopted. So, you know, <laughs> I learned all this stuff as I go about me like why i crave certain things now i mean that could be just like because now i think i'm french and i tried to learn french and it was hardest down the <laughs> but anyway but um but there's some indian heritage here too but i love all this melting pot that mississippi has brought to me and the history the blues the you know even the racial discrimination the black and white i mean it's like it doesn't matter how long this goes on for Mississippi gets blamed, but there are more states, but it's like we embrace each other. It's like a well, it's comfort. It's it's, it's, it's a like, comfort it's like zone. Children still fighting, but it's, it's like but but Lisa, it's, like it's a comfort zone. It's, like, it's, it's, a, it's a comfort zone. Comfort. You know, and you could leave and come back, and it'll right. still be the same. And it's comforting. Uh, okay, I it's know. what you know. <laughs> And that the thing is, great. is, you know, when I, I, I grew up in I New Jersey, you know, I grew up in New Jersey and, and, you know, that's a small, it's a small state. It's very densely populated, but it's a small state. Uh -huh. But from a very young age, I knew I wanted to leave New Jersey because I wanted to do greater things. I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do, uh -huh. but yeah, I, I know. And at a very young age, I was telling people, I'm going to move to California. Never been here, but I was going to move to California because, uh -huh. you know, I outgrew that state i outgrew that mindset mm -hmm. i yeah. wanted bigger and better and i wanted opportunities that new jersey sure. couldn't have give they would never give me so i took the chance and moved here you know 3000 right. miles on my own to right. carve a space for me and mm -hmm. you know and you know people go oh god that was brave i'm like no when you have a passion right you have right. a passion and you have a direction you aren't scared because again, what do, why do people hold themselves back in life? Whether it's, you know, a why are you still in a job? Again, I, I told you this today, Lisa, I'm in my job yep. 34 years. I yeah. still love it. I am not <laughs> bored, you know, that's rare. 
you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, longevity in something whether it's in a relationship, whether it's in a friendship, whether it's in a, a job, you know, it right. really is, does that still spark your passion? Mm -hmm. Right. And if it, it doesn't, right. then you're complacent, you're going to be unhappy, yeah. but you right. don't, everybody, you never have to settle. Right. You don't right. have to have fear hold you back. Well, there is one thing right. I would love to point out. Somebody was asking me the other day, because um, I'm life coaching, of the mm -hmm. difference between, we got into a discussion between meaningful life and happy life. And often you can have be doing something very meaningful and mm -hmm. your vocation, see you keep saying job to me, you're it's a doing vocation. your vocation. You're totally doing your vocation and you're good at it and you love it. So it's become your vocation, but you could be doing something meaningful in advocacy or something and you're not necessarily happy. Mm -hmm. And you can be happy and content and complacent and you're happy, you're happy, you're not unhappy but right. you don't feel like your life is meaningful. Mm -hmm. It's great when you can merge the two yeah. and you are both. Mm. And you're not always gonna be happy when you're, when you're doing something meaningful. You're not always gonna be doing something meaningful when you're happy. But, but let's be honest, okay? Somebody right. who says they're happy 24 seven, A, is on drugs, <laughs> or that makes them happy, because that's bullshit and fantasy, you know? Mm. You're, right. you're, people aren't happy 24 7 even rich people who you think why the hell would they not be happy <laughs> they're not right. happy so right. you know right. every it, what they say it's an inside job right right it's an inside. how you feel inside it's who it's you are body it's connection. who you are i mean i'm, I'm a big right. proponent of therapy you know what i mean i like it i go right. to it um right. and it's it's you know and it's it's funny because for me therapy is I get a forum that's non-judgmental, mm -hmm. and I could say, this is what's going on. And right. a good therapist will never tell you what to do. Never. never. If they are telling right. you what to do, then they're, then they're, they're not a good therapist. It, it's really kind of sick, actually. They become a guru. Yeah, and that's, and that's sick. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. Right. So right. You should right. have to come up with the plan yourself. Right. You got it. Right. You know, and they should engage right. you. They should engage. It's like asking the rock, because I, I have a major in psychology. So they are supposed to like have you spew and right. then have buzzwords or something so you right. can think of it. Because you know what? What may work right. for me for this situation is not yeah. going to work for you, is not going to work for you, and is not going to work for you. So a good therapist allows you to come up with the plan that's going to work for you, that's going to keep you mentally healthy, period. But to be happy right. or perfect, no such thing. Delusional. Right, right. <laughs> that is true. That is so true. It is. And um, All right, so I, let's, I, let's do something fun. Right. Really is fun. Lisa, one yes. thing that makes you happy. One thing that makes you happy. Uh, let's see. Hmm, my gosh. One thing that makes me happy. Not the end all be all. You could have a laundry yeah. list, but just what came to your mind first was like what don't overthink it, Capricorn. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean yeah, because I've got I mean, I've, of course I got a swimming pool. I love water. So I love being by the water. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a swim pool. So it's like thinking about, you know, Gail, it's like going down to both. It's like, I love being by the ocean and just kind of mm. taking all that in something bigger than me. Okay. That, bring, that brings me into kind of centers me. Okay. Ronnie, one thing makes you happy. First thing that entered my mind was cuddling, whether it's like me nuzzling into <laughs> my husband's neck or me cuddling with the pillow or me cuddling with my kitties on the sofa. I love, I, love I have cats too, by the way. I used to have Great Danes, but I have cats. Well, <laughs> that's a difference. That's a big difference. Mara. <laughs> Oh, there's no question. Uh, besides my cat, um, the number one thing is creating art. Oh, yeah. Cool. Me? Yeah. Right. Um, besides yeah. my job, I love this show. I love yeah. doing this. This is something that I've always felt. I mean, I always I like being in. I'm not shy and I'm not an egoist um, or a narcissist, but I like being up front. I think with all my experience and my intelligence and, and everything that makes me who I am at 60 years, I have a lot to offer mm -hmm. people, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and I think through my experiences, 
I can, you know, have I can, you know, help people. You sure can. You, you know, help me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but I mean that that's that I just love to be there for people. Mm-hmm. I love to be there for people. I I I love to be a you know, I love a contributor, Gan. A caregiver. I like to take care of people. Mm-hmm. I, you know, Gan, and I will say this, what you're saying, I would have said the same thing. I love, I have a passion for what I do and to do the same thing like you're doing, working. What I do, it's not a job. Going back to the vocation that Ronnie was talking. I love to train people. I love to help. Mm-hmm. Even if I never made another dime, mm-hmm. I love to help people and to elevate people to that next step of their life or to feel like I'm living my life. Yeah. And I would have said that, but maybe that's a Southern thing for me to hold back on my own personal endeavor. And, and, and you said something about a narcissistic thing. I mean, I'm a powerful woman, but being, I mean, I feel strong. I mean, when I was in sports, I was the captain of the team. You know, it's like, I didn't, I wanted to be cheered for. And nowadays, if you hear, it's like, I want a cheerleader. Somebody say, you're narcissistic. Are you, are you a narcissist? And, you know, and being a personal trainer or being a head coach for somebody else, somebody would be like, you've got con- control issues. So <laughs> is that a Southern thing? That no, I feel like no, I it's, it's an, it's no, no, it's honey, woman honey, thing. it's, it's a woman thing. Yeah. And if anybody's okay. saying that you're narcissistic, that it's a control thing, it's because right. of their own insecurity and their own jealousy. Right. And that's right. personal. What does it say? Right. It, it's, there's a, an adage. And of course I really suck at these things, but it's, it's the thing that says don't change for anyone because it's not about you. Right. Their, their reaction to you is about, right. it's about them. So right. don't take it personally. Oh, right. You're like a mirror but, of them yeah. and it's their frustration mm-hmm. or whatever. You know, right. I mean, friends make fun of me. They don't ever call me a narcissist, but, you know, they say, boy, you're self-promoting. Well, you know what? Why not? I've earned it. I'm 60 fucking years old. Mm-hmm. I am in a wonderful go- knock on wood place in my life. You know, yeah. it's, uh, you know, and yes, I'm from the generation where you don't bra- It's like bragging. Why are you bragging right. about yourself? Right. Well, it's yeah. not. It's, I right. feel that I, like yourself, we, you, all right. of us here, we can add something to the table and why right. shouldn't we be able to be, you know, you know, yeah. Hey, look, I'm good. That's why I love Mary. Oh no. She wasn't the one who wrote it. Um, the poem about who am I to shine? Um, I, I was going to say Marianne Williamson, but I don't oh, know. Do you know yeah, the, pro- you know that poem? Who am I to shine? Who are you? And she goes, Ashley, who are you not to shine? I think it right. was Nelson it's, Mandela. It's Mary Williamson. It does sound like I think, yeah. But I think Nelson Mandela right. actually wrote. But the point is, it's like, you know, it's like, keep, same. like, keep on shining, you know, mm-hmm. keep on shining. And you know what? It's, right. you know, look, I'm a publicist by nature. I mean, that's who that's really what I do. Um, so, you know, I'm used to promoting people. You know, promoting people. That's what I do. Um, but you know what? It's okay to promote yourself. Of course. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, I'm not going to promote about something that I'm not. See, there's a big difference. I'm not going to promote about something that I'm not. That's hypocrisy. Mm-hmm. And right. that's deceiving right. someone. But if it's something that I know I'm good at, why mm-hmm. not express that? You know, because right. it is about tone and it is also about humility. You know, you're not going to be an asshole about it. You know, you're just right. it's just going to literally come up in conversation like like, look, I know I'm smart. I know I'm really smart, but I don't have to tell people, hi, I'm really smart. But by the vocabulary that I use for what I bring to the table, just, you know, with, you know, you people know. So you don't have to bang it over the head. It's just be who you are. I do have to tell people right. I'm smart. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. But it's like Lisa. I mean, you know, Lisa, even for you, I mean, you know, you don't have to tell people all of your, you know, your repertoire and your resume. You know, you go to a class with you and you have to, and you don't have to say one thing. Right. Well, one thing. Thank you. Well, you know, remember the old quote? I, I can't remember who said it. Uh, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Right. And so I pride myself on that. It's like, you know, you hold back and you want to hear, you know, what where other people are in their life. And you want to, like, again, I mean, help them and to make them feel good. And 
and and and I and I do. I, I want to continue doing that. But and, isn't it the best uh, thing, like for you and for Ronnie? I mean, because you do people uh, things, um, and even you with your art. You I know, do this for you, myself. You, yeah. I know, but you you put it out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter who mm -hmm. these people are, but because mm -hmm. it's a vocation for y'all. No, right. not y'all. Where the hell am I from? I'm yeah. from New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> it's catchy. It's, it's catchy. Daughter, look, it's coming through. It's coming through. <laughs> but it's, well, my father was stationed in Arkansas um, okay. if, if, if in the service. So. But but my point is, is <laughs> I don't know what my point is. Thank you, menopause. Um, but the thing was, is sort of like you care. Care. You're talking about. You yeah, care. care. And you don't, you don't real. It, people don't have to lavish you with gifts. Isn't it just like, like, isn't, I've always said, when you do something for somebody, when you just do it, and it's, right. you're not, they're not using you, you're offering, you do it. The most right. important thing, the only thing that I, that I, I think it's just, what I love to hear is when you do something for someone mm -hmm. and they right. just say thank you. It's gratitude. Right. And gratitude mm -hmm. for me is so important. Right. Right. You know, it's, yeah. it's hard. Yeah. I know I, this is your show, so shut me up when you have to. I'm trying to see the time. Are we over? You just, I'll, you know what? I'll worry about the time. <laughs> okay. Sorry. No, I just said. And this is the last time you're going to talk, so get it out. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> you made me think of something. Um, it's hard to sometimes, and yes, you're grateful and you show gratitude and you care about people, but what about when you, I'm sorry, when you don't like someone? And still you want to be a loving person. And I just, the base love I can give to people I don't like or disrespect is at least the human respect. I will not harm them. I mean, that's like the bottom snake level love. It's like, <laughs> I can love, I can love people. I'm not going to hate. I don't want to be that person. I can't hate with anybody. hate people. Right. I can at least not hurt them and respect them as a human being and leave them Look, alone. Look, here's the deal. A number one, you don't physically hurt them. Exactly. Okay, number two. Or in any way. Well, well, no, right number two, like you don't physically hurt them. Number two, you do not wish them harm. Exactly. You don't wish them, you only always wish them well, you know. Um, I just won't engage. It's not even about engaging. I mean, like I, there are people, trust me, there are people that I have to work with mm -hmm. that I don't particularly like it. I'm sure they don't like me. Mm. But there's an amount of respect and professionalism and human mm. decency to be cordial yep. and, right. and engage. And if you cannot do that, then you got some issues. I mean, it's, it's just, you know, I'm not saying you have to love everybody, you know. But the word hate, it's so funny because, you know, they say, what's the, you know, what's the, what's, what's the opposite of love? But it's not hate. No, it's, it's indifference. It's indifference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And indifference, indifference yeah. is the worst. When you have love, there's passion. If you hate right. somebody, passion. there's passion uh -huh. in that. Mm -hmm. Indifference right. is empty. Indifference. Yeah. Empty. Right. right. Yeah, and but when you say you have what calls a fear within somebody is that there's something indifferent or there's something different about you that they don't know how to relate to. Mm. And it's any any kind of societal situation, if it's a gender identity or if it's a racial uh, preference, if it's racial, there's just such an indifference or a difference about you than me. But that's where, like you're saying, just embrace that. I mean, and, and that's not even a Southern thing of hospitality or mm -hmm. etiquette. Just be kind mm -hmm. and just, you know, like love your neighbor as you would, you know, love yourself mm -hmm. or, you know, do unto others as you. Now, look, this is the Southern coming out. You hit, hear it right now. I, where's your Bible? I where's your Bible? I, I, hear, I hear Baptist, Blanche Devereaux. I, I yeah, I do. Yeah. Streetcar name desire. <laughs> well, I was talking about Blanche Devereaux from Golden Girls. Oh, well. <laughs> Right. You were talking about Blanche Dubois. Well, Blanche yeah. Dubois from yeah. Streetcar Name Desire. Yeah. 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 Obviously, a generational right. gap there. Yeah. No, I still knew who you <laughs> meant. Yes, you are. Still Magnolia. Yep. But, but yeah, but to embrace. I will that. always be the Shirley MacLaine in Steel Magnolias. Okay. I never oh, saw I that. See, never saw that. Everybody thought she was so mean, but well, she really was a good person. She was sarcastic. I she love was, the yeah. sarcasm. You are more her best friend, from what I see, Olympia Dukakis' role. Oh, yeah, I forgot yeah. Olympia. Yeah, maybe I'll go with Olympia. Should I watch that movie? I think it's yeah, really depressing, should. right? 
No, it's hard. She dies at, at the end. end. Yeah. But if you're prepared for that, the chemistry right. with those women were fabulous. Okay. Right. They were. Right. It was. That was a that was a good movie. And that that took a little bit of different personalities of a southern kind of a you know, uh, orientation of what you got from the South. I think it covered it pretty good. Mm -hmm. so. For me, Dolly Parton would always be the poster child of the South. <laughs> I mean, I've worked with her. I've met her. She's cooked she for me. Nice. She's a sweetheart. Well, yeah, she seems she so is. nice. You know. And, and, you know, and she has stayed, you have to say, she has stayed consistent with her roots. Yep. yep. Consistency. She's always been consistent. I, I, You know, I, it just seems like that she would be like kind of your... There's somebody you call, I'm having a bad day or I'm having an exciting day. Who do I call? I'd like to call Dar Dolly today. Yeah, yeah and she'll yeah. say, come over, come over, I'll come cook over. for you. I, I had some tea for you. I, uh, yeah. Well, All I right. just want to say, believe it or not, Lisa, remember I told you how fast an hour and a half would go? Well, we're here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I sure have enjoyed it. Well, as as yeah, always, you're yeah. always welcome to come back when you write your book or okay. when you go global. You know, let us know. You're okay. always welcome. And if you're in L.A., <laughs> you know, and it happens to be a Friday, you're always welcome to join us, not as a guest, okay. but as, Thank you know, part you. of the table, as part of our family now. So welcome. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you nice so much. Such a pleasure. Don't hang up yet because we're not. Here. Don't okay. hang up. So, um, everyone, thank you for joining us between the sheets. Uh, usually the first and third Friday of every month. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram, QTE Brett, and the YouTube page. You'll see all the shows. You can go to the UBN mm -hmm. um, uh, Facebook page also to see our shows. Um, you know what? Just be safe and be well. Um, don't get into any trouble. Um, Yom Kippur is this weekend, Sunday to Monday. So Yom Kippur, to atone your sins, because I know I will be. Um, anyway, have be safe, be well. Ronnie, where can people find you? RonnieLowLifeCoach.com. Ronnie Low Life Coach. Uh, find me on Facebook and on Instagram. Mara. Uh, MaraShane.com is my website. You can also find me on Mara underscore Shane on Instagram and Mara Shane Art on Instagram. Lisa, where can people find you? What's your website and your handle on Instagram or any of those other things? Yeah, well, you just you can pull me up on Facebook. Everything's under construction right now because I'm going to that different phase of my life to rebrand. But I have a ProfitBodyTraining.com, which, like I said, right now is some old pictures, but I'm going to revamp all that. So Yay. just stay tuned. Stay tuned. Well, FYI, we will be on October 5th. So we'll be on October 5th. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tony. Wait, October um, 5th is a Thursday. Oh, whatever it is. I, I, can't, I hate iPhones. Oh, anyway, um, they Thursday. have their calendars all fucked up. But I wanted to say thank you, everybody. Thank Are we still you. on, Tony? Oh, we're still on. Okay, the music <laughs> left. Um, see you all soon. The first week in the first Friday in October. Six. At, what? Six. The sixth of October. Um, and uh, thank you. And I wanted to say something else, but I guess we're done. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank um, you, Lisa. I will see you in a couple of weeks. I will Absolutely. see you in a couple of weeks, lady. I know. Absolutely. So um, thank you very much, and have a good good night. Um, yeah. Namaste, everybody. Thank you. All right. Namaste. Bye. Bye-bye.